Hi, welcome to Painting with Victoria. I'm Victoria Goebel and in today's lesson we will be painting a flamingo. So before we get started, we have to do the background first. So what I'd like to do is maybe work on the water first and then we'll do the sky. So take out your brush that is the flat brush. It's the only flat brush that you got in your kit. And we're gonna go ahead and start with making a very pretty purple color. Now, red and blue make purple. So we have magenta and phthalo blue. If we mix the two together, I want it to be more of a red purple. So I'm gonna put a little bit more magenta in that and then take some white and mix it in that to get a lovely purple color. I think I like this. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just by dipping my brush in the jar of water. Okay, oops, before we get started, I forgot we should need to put a line across so we know where the water goes. So I don't like to do things right in the middle. This is a 14 uh, length from here to here. So I don't wanna do it at seven. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go a little bit below and about, mm, let's do seven and three quarters from the top. And now I'm just gonna draw a line across just to establish my horizon line on the water. There we go, that was simple. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our purple color and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go across the best that you can. I'll use the wide part of my brush. Don't worry if it's not perfectly straight. I know mine isn't. There we go. Dip it in a little water again. And so now I'm just gonna do some brushy strokes like this, going side to side. And just so we get a little bit more of a neutral shade, I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in a little bit of orange and put it in a few places. And from here, I'm gonna take it and dip it into the white. Don't rinse your brush out and come across from one end to the other. This is, this is, an, oh, um, this is more like, I guess, like it would be like a pond. So we're not gonna want to have, to see um, like uh, waves that you would see in the ocean. It's not an ocean um, body of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep going across. We wanna see motion, so don't paint it in until it's a sol solid color. Let the um, color that you put down first come through. There we go. And keep going with that all the way across. And isn't it pretty how it's fusing the purple into uh, the white? Just keep going across, 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 across. Great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take our phthalo blue and mix that in with the purple color that we originally made and some white. So it's kind of a, oh, more of a periwinkle color. And so now I'm gonna go across the water in a few places. Isn't that pretty the way all those colors are just meshing in together. So pretty, just, just knowing what colors to apply is sometimes the key to a good painting. Okay, a little more blue. Our flamingo is going to have its leg inside the water coming out with one leg bent. Maybe a little more phthalo blue in a few places. There we go. I just love the way that phthalo blue mixes in with all of our colors. Phthalo blue is a lovely turquoise blue color. All right. Now let's go ahead and dip our paintbrush in white. Never rinsing it out yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some pretty white lines in here. Again, just soft, soft, mixing everything together. Just 
soft strokes, not really pressing hard on my canvas, just very lightly. Okay. And later we'll put some reflections in the water from the peacock, but we'll use those colors on our brush to put those reflections in. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the sky. And the sky is very, very simple. It's just your cat orange, light with white. So what we're gonna do is take some white and mix it with our orange. To create a beautiful sunset orangey sky. And I'm just gonna lay some color down right here. As you can see, I always kind of skip a space. Most of the time when people do a painting, they always think the sky has to be blue, but that's not true. Sometimes we have the most amazing colors in the sky. And, and this is one of those times. And so now I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and dip it right into the white and come across and blend the two colors together. It's also giving it kind of a wispy cloud effect. When we get done with this part, we're going to take this outside and let it dry for about 10 minutes. Oops, sometimes you drip and you just it's just best to just come across here and blend that in. Even that peach color is pretty. Yeah. I guess I'll just keep going with it. There we go. And that can be reflecting the what the sky into the water. Okay, let me rinse my brush out because I don't want to put purple in my sky. And some of that purple was still wet. Okay, so back to dipping it in the white and blending it in with our beautiful tangerine color. There go. A little more white and we're gonna go all the way down to our horizon line. Still a soft peach color. It's not a true white because I never did uh, rinse my brush out enough to get all the orange out of it, which is nice. Okay. Very good. So I'm going to inspect my painting here, make sure that I don't have any white canvas showing, and it looks like I don't, so just gonna let this dry. I'm gonna take it outside if it's a sunny day. If not, just take a blow dryer and hold it for about five minutes. Not too close, you wanna hold the blow dryer kind of far away. And yeah, I think actually what I do like though is I like seeing that orange into the water. So I'm gonna put a little bit more along the top here. Get rid of that dark purple line. Orange and white and just maybe put a little bit more in it. Just get that reflection of the sun set into our water. And look at all the other colors that are coming through. It's so pretty. Okay, now we're gonna let it dry. This is a good place to stop. All right, after it's dry, come back and I'll show you what to do with your flamingo. Okay, so I was blow drying my canvas because it was a little humid outside and um, if it's a sunny day and it's humid, it is still gonna take too long for your painting to dry. So have a blow dryer on hand that, um, that's dry heat and that'll dry it a lot nicer. So I'm touching this, it feels great. So now what we're gonna do is take our Flamingo template that came in your kit. And this would probably be one of the hardest things to to draw and one of the things I love about my lessons is that I there's no drawing required. Um, I don't even want to draw a flamingo and I'm a professional artist. So I have these lovely templates for you to use and what we're going to do is place our flamingo somewhat in the center and we want to make sure that we hand uh, trace 
all the way around our template. Sharpen your pencil so it's nice and sharp and you'll get nice clean um, lines. But see where his foot is right here? You don't even need to do the foot. In fact, you could just cut it off if you want to. But the reason why I'm leaving it in case you want to do this painting again and you want to have him on the ground, you'll want to do his foot. But this leg is actually in the water and so we won't see that foot. And we're just going to go ahead and trace everything else. And let's see, I kind of want to lift him up just a little bit higher. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start tracing him. And then after we get done tracing him, we're going to block him in. Okay, so I've got this completely traced. I'm going to lift up and make sure that I got it all. Yep. And so while I um, have got my pencil out, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of sketch up like this and across here. And that will be his beak. And then let's go ahead and bring a line right down the middle. And that'll be the middle of his beak. And then the black part will be right here and right here. So um, I hope you can see that on the screen. And that will be the black part of his beak, the white part of his beak, and then his eye will be right about here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is block this in completely with a color that is going to be a combination of the magenta and orange. And what it's going to do is make a beautiful, beautiful, deep, rich red color. And this is our background color to the entire flamingo. So um, we're going to probably speed the camera up a little bit. You take your time and fill this in, but we're just going to fill in our entire flamingo with that color. Okay, so I've blocked in my entire flamingo except for the beak area and the bottom part right here. And we don't really need to do that with the red because that's going to be different than um, the rest of our flamingo. So this probably needs to go out and dry a little bit before we get started. Otherwise, um, we'll just be lifting paint off. So let it dry for about five minutes or hold a blow dryer to it um, for about five minutes and then we'll come back and work on the detail feathers. Welcome back. Uh, my flamingo is dry to the touch so um, we're going to go ahead and work on some feather details. So take out your six round number six round, and let's go ahead and just dip it right into the cat orange light. Just straight cat orange light. And so what I'm gonna do is start uh, putting some strokes on, I kinda have a little bit too much paintbrush, there we go, on the head right here, and then I'm gonna come around, and I'm gonna hit the front part of his neck this and then give it some soft strokes going in this direction leaving the uh, dark part on the right side there we go and now I'm going to go ahead and hit the top part and the feathers um, it's almost kind of like an ostrich too the feathers are going down here but then they're going up here where they're wings are. Okay, so. Go. More orange. And this, on this part, and the reason why I love this brush is because it's got that lovely point. I want to kind of have my strokes going in a very brushy direction. 
using that point. Okay, so now these feathers would be going down and these feathers would be going up. And then we have some other feathers that are going in this direction. There we go. I'm gonna leave a little bit of this dark part. I think that would be very pretty to have some deep red um, parts of it. And so now what I'm gonna do is I go ahead and just hit a few places in the legs, just a few, just a couple of strokes. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is take a little magenta and mix it with the last color that I just used, which was just the orange. And I'm gonna take some white. And so what I'm trying to create here is a very pretty peacock pink color. So maybe just a little bit more magenta. I don't want it to be tangerine. I want it to be on the pink side. So these are gonna be the feathers that go up like this in an up, I'm kind of painting in an upward motion. do it with the feathers that are right here using my paintbrush to help me create those because of the point that's on the end of it and we'll go ahead and create these great big ones down here we're doing is graduating with our color we're going we started deep and we're gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter so now I'm gonna go ahead and oh I want to do a little bit on the top of his head okay now I'm gonna take and dip my paintbrush in white and put it in that mixture and make it even lighter and I'm gonna go ahead and do it again this time just kind of press and lift press and lift and this will create those lovely feathers. We're gonna do it one last time once we get done with this layer. pretty how it's building out. Okay. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to hit a little, a little bit on the top of his head. And I'm going to take that color and maybe fill in this part of the beak underneath here. There we go. Okay, while I have this color out, I'm also going to highlight his legs a little bit more. And this leg is in the front, so let's start with that one. And they always have that kind of a little knot thing here. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and go into just straight white, just dip it in white. I still haven't cleaned out my brush yet, and I'm gonna go and do a few feathers. building out, isn't it? Okay, so we'll go ahead and do a few of these on the top of his back. I 
I think that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight with that same light color, highlight his legs again. Let's go ahead and take our fine little tiny two, number two round brush and we're going to go ahead and take it and dip it in white and fill in this part right here. Don't forget to leave a space for his eye. You can almost see the lead coming through. still want to leave that little bit of pink that's right there. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. So let's go ahead and go back to one of those pretty corally colors that we were using to do all the feathers. And there's probably still some wet um, paint in your on your palette. And what I want to do is get a couple of the reflections in the water. So I'm just going to brush a few places here. And that just sort of makes it look like um, he's standing there and there's a reflection of all of his colors inside. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of this pretty blue that we used when we made the water and just kind of do a circular motion here. So it looks like he's in there. Take some white with the same paintbrush and let's go ahead and just do some circular motions around. So then it looks like as he has his um, leg in the water, it's kind of rippling out on the sides. All right, so now we're gonna take our teeny tiny paintbrush and we're gonna take some, let's take some of that phthalo blue and mix it in with the magenta to make a super, super dark, dark, dark. It almost looks black when you put those two together, but it's actually just a very dark purple color. But we're gonna go ahead and use that for this part of the beak because if you look at it, it looks just like it's almost black. I'm not one to ever, you'll never see black in your kits. I don't work with black paint. I like to make black paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the line in his beak, just like that, and do his little eye, like that. And then he has like a little thing across uh, the top of his beak, this little line right here. And I think what I'm gonna do uh, before I start the foliage is take some magenta, straight magenta, and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight some of the bottom parts here just to kind of give it some depth. Take my finger, rub it in. And maybe right here in this deep part of his neck. Underneath his little face here. Just kind of highlighting a few areas to give it some depth. And maybe in a few places where the feathers are right here. That looks good. All right. So clean out your brush really well because we're going to work on the foliage and that will be the last part of our painting. So take out your um, number six round brush. And what we're going to do is uh, create some uh, foliage coming forward. Now, this is actually more in the forefront than the flamingo. So this would be the last thing we do because in all my paintings, we start with the back and we work our way forward. So what we're going to do is take the green and mix some orange in that green. And what that's gonna do is warm up our green. Isn't that pretty? And take some white and mix that in there. 
want to make enough to really uh, fill up our the bottom part of our painting. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, and this brush is great for creating these kinds of leaves because of that point. So all I'm going to do is start with the point, come up, and then over. It's kind of like they're tropical plants. And you can put as many as you want or as little as you want. And you don't even have to do foliage. If you like the painting without the foliage, then by all means sign your painting and call it done. But I just sort of think it needs that last element in the painting and the color looks so pretty. I kind of like to put my leaves in all different directions. No two are alike. This, this paintbrush just makes it so easy. Little blades of grass coming up. And like I said, this is all in the forefront. So it goes right off of your canvas. Make sure that you go all the way down to the bottom of your canvas. This is probably, I'm gonna do one more. This is a good place to stop. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is work on the highlights of my leaves. And the way we do that is we take a lot more orange and add that to the mixture. And some white. There we go. And what I'm trying to create is just a nice warm green. And that's what the orange does. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just go over every leaf. Some will be in front and some will be behind. And just highlight everything just by putting a stroke just like that. Once one swoop, don't overwork it. So we are pretty much done with the painting when we finish this. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, I sure did. I love painting flamingos. I love painting um, wildlife. And um, please feel free to post your painting on my Facebook page. Uh, let's paint with Victoria Goebel. And I hope that you enjoy this so much that you order all of my painting kits and just keep painting because the more you paint, the better you get. You can't get good at it if you're a beginner if you stop at one. And don't be discouraged. Um, pretty much with all the kits, I've given you enough painting to do the painting twice. So all you have to do is just get yourself another 11 by 14 canvas and, and do it again if you want to. So yeah, this is done and I think I am ready to sign it. So I'm going to take my little tiny paintbrush and I think what I will do so that it shows up is pick that phthalo blue color. I always say when you sign your name, make sure the paint's watered down and it'll glide a lot easier. There we go. All right, until we um, meet again, Happy painting. Take care of yourself.